In today's video, we're going to show you step by step how to install F80 M3 brakes on an F30 to take it from this to this. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. The F30 is an amazing platform that BMW put out, but one area that it kind of suffers is the brakes. Even if you have an M Sport like Chris has on his F30 340, but don't worry, because today we're gonna install F80 M3 calipers and an amazing rotor and pad setup from StopTech. Now, just to set the stage, we are going to go step-by-step step in a DIY for you today. And for all of the links to all the products, we're gonna have it linked down in the description. Now, the reason that we went with this style brake setup with the F80 style calipers is it is a very cost-effective way to get a bigger brake upgrade, especially when you're upgrading the performance in your car, you gotta be able to handle it, you gotta be able to stop. Now, if you went with an actual big brake upgrade from you know, StopTech or AP Racing, Brembo, it's gonna cost you five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars or more, but because we started with some used F80 M3 calipers from eBay, this whole package, including the new rotors, pads, sensors, and whatnot, is gonna cost us about two grand. So it's about a quarter of the cost of what you would pay. Now, Chris's car, as many of you know, is an M Sport from the factory. So it has the larger Brembo up in the front, and then it has a brake that looks like this in the rear. Um, if you do have a factory 328 with the base brake package, it's going to be a little bit different, but don't worry because we're gonna do a video for that car as well. All right, before we get installing, let's talk about the current brake package that's on the car and how this system is different. So this is the front brake off of my M Sport F30 335. Spoiler alert, we did this exact same upgrade on my car. We didn't film it as a DIY, we did it more of a vlog. It's launching in two days from now. And once that's live, we're gonna have it linked down in the description for you. So by the time you watch this, it's probably gonna be down there. But this is the brake that you're going to find on an M Sport. And at first glance, it looks very similar to an F80 M3 brake or the F30 upgrade. However, let's turn it around and I'll show you something pretty cool. On the back here, if you look over here, you'll see it says BMW and then it says 340. That means that this brake can only take up to a 340 millimeter front rotor, which is the standard size. However, if you take a look over here at this one, you will notice that this one says, you can see in there, 370 slash 380. Now on an F30, the largest that you can go is a 370. So we're upgrading from a 340 millimeter front rotor to a 370. If you have an F80 like these two over here, you run a 380 millimeter rotor. Now I haven't personally tested, but I have been told that because of the knuckle that's on the car, it just doesn't work out. You have to use the 370 if you're doing this on an F30. Now, other than that, the, the brake pads are the same. Um, we are going to be upgrading to the StopTech stainless lines from the factory lines. But really the big difference here is, as you can see, the holes for mounting are actually a little bit lower on this one over here. So it allows you to take a little bit larger rotor, which is going to give you more stopping power. It has the same amount of pistons. It's still made by Brembo. Otherwise it is identical. Now moving on to compare the rear. The big difference is A, you're going to get an additional piston. So you're going to get better stopping power. And also this one is limited. It can only take a 330 millimeter rotor where this one can take a 345 millimeter rotor. So just for reference again, the front rotor on Chris's car right now is 340. We're gonna go to a 345 in the back and add an additional piston. So you're gonna get a ton more stopping power. And in addition to that, these, if you haven't used this style setup with the Brembo, 
it makes it so easy to change out your brakes. You don't have to worry about the spring and pulling it apart. It's a pain in the butt. With these, you pop these two pins out, the pads slide right out, slide the new pads in, put those pins back and you are ready to go. So even if you are at the track, you wanna run track pads there. Um, if you're not familiar with track pads, they're very loud, very squealy, and they sound like you have terrible brakes. So a lot of guys don't wanna drive around town. You have your stock pads, you drive to the track, you pull the pads out, you throw the race ones in and you are on the track and ready to go. So it makes it a million times easier to change. So with that, let's get started. The first part of the process is we need to press in the brake pedal. So to do so, I have some microfiber towels over this beautiful two by four, and I'm going to press it on the brake and then slide Chris's seat up on these towels. Now what that's going to do is it's going to close the valves in the system so when we take the caliper off, excess air isn't going to get back in. And then we're gonna show you how to bleed it at the very end, we have a motive bleeder. We're going to then afterwards pressurize the system and then it's gonna force any air in the system out. So if you do not do this, you will get air in your lines and you will need to bleed it over and over and over again to make sure that all those bubbles are out. So with that, let's pull the wheels. Now for this process, you do not need to have a lift, but I would highly recommend putting your car up on four jack stands. If you don't know how to do that, we have an extremely old video that we could try to link down below for you. Um, but with that removed, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the brake line. So to do that, we're going to need an 11 millimeter open-ended wrench. Now, when you're working with brake lines, you should really use a line wrench, looks like this. If you have just an open-ended, you can definitely use it, this is just gonna help you prevent it from stripping. Um, it's also a good idea to have a 17 mil to hold down here. Now you're actually twisting from the top. You're not twisting from the bottom. So I'm gonna take my 11 mil, just crack that loose and have a container down below just in case you have any brake fluid that escapes out. And always be very careful when you're working with brake fluid because it will eat your paint and kill your dog. So you wanna make sure that you're wearing gloves and also make sure that you clean up any spills. And because we are removing the line from over here first, you don't have to worry about the pressure that's built up from pressing down the brake. The other thing is make sure that you don't have your e-brake on because that's going to get in the way when we go to do the rear brakes. Okay, so next we need to release this clip here that secures our brake line in place. So I like to use a pick tool like this. Um, you can also use a flathead. Okay, so then basically you just get in here and you just pry it straight up. Looks just like that. Now the StopTech brake lines will actually include a new one. If you try to reuse the OEM one, it's going to be too loose of a fit. Then you can slide it back, slide it up and around point this down towards our bucket just in case we have any that leaks. Now it's time to remove the caliper. So to do so, there's an 18 mil here and there's one down here. Okay, so we're just gonna release these. Okay, then you can just take your caliper, pull it off like so. Okay, so then what you need to do is you need to remove this little retaining screw it is a six mil hex. Um, I like to use it on an impact because a lot of times these are a little bit stuck. And then what we're going to do, assuming UPS gets here in time, we actually have some stainless steel ones we are going to be installing. There we go. Looks just like that. Now, as you saw, as soon as I removed that little retaining screw, this came loose. Really, all that screw does is it just holds your your rotor in place so you can get the caliper on and whatnot. Outside of that, your lug nuts are really just pressing this on so it's just to make it so it doesn't fall on your foot. So with that, you can pull your rotor off and we are ready to clean up the new one and then install the new rotor. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I've already started it off camera. We're just cleaning up the hub. You wanna make sure that it is nice and even, otherwise you can get vibrations and whatnot. I like to use this little wire wheel on my drill here. They're super cheap. Just watch out, always wear glasses because these little things fly off in addition to all the dust you're creating. So I'm just gonna finish cleaning this up and then we'll install the new rotor. All right, so now take your rotor. 
this in. I'm gonna put our new screw that we got in here. And then once that's tightened up, you can let go. It's always very helpful when you do have a stud conversion. Um, just makes it a little bit easier so nothing falls on your foot. And we'll just snug this up. All right, perfect. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to pull these pads out of our F80 M3 calipers. Now, as you can see, this is a used caliper. It's got some chipping paint and scratches on it and whatnot, but don't worry because we have a video on how to correct that in a later date. So one of the reasons we want to do this on the car first is to show you how easy that other video is, but stay tuned for that. Um, the way that these work, two pins, they hold it in. You use a little punch tool, you pop them out from the front to the rear. So I'm just gonna put this under here just to level it out. You take a punch like this, tap it in. The pin's gonna come out the back. Just take it. Might be a little bit corroded. Wiggle it out, looks just like this. This little wide stopper piece right there, always remember to put that in the back. And then the pointy part goes to the front. Now, when we actually go to reinstall this, Table's a little messy here. This kit includes new clips and new pins. Okay, next thing we can do now that we're here, we're going to unclip it. It goes like this. If you ever get confused, just remember that the, the parts in the middle that go down, press down on the pads. Actually, these pads are pretty meaty. They have quite a bit of life, but it's always a really good idea to have matching front and rear. We wanna make sure that Chris gets a good setup here. So if you're at the racetrack, you pop those out, you slide out the pads, you just push in on your pistons to compress them a little bit and then just slide in the new ones and you're good to go. So there's one pad, the other pad just fell out the bottom. Um, the other thing that we need to do, we need to remove this brake line and install the new one. When you look at the way that a brake line is set up, you have that little 11 millimeter screw essentially that's going to thread in. This part doesn't actually turn. So if you put that in first, the only real way to get this in is if you pre-spin it up and you don't wanna bunch up the line like that. So just take your new line, thread it into here, and then it's going to be good to go. And then that way, there's no brake fluid spilling on anything either. Okay, so stock size on the brake line is a 14 mil. You're going to just loosen that and then spin it out like so. Okay, and we're going to take our new stop tech line. In the kit, there is a short line and a long line. The long line goes in the front. Let's carefully spin it in. It's a little bit awkward to get started, but then once you're started, it's super easy. And just take that 14 mil again. You wanna just snug it up. Now, like I said before, brake fluid will eat paint. So if you have a little spillage like this, you wanna have some brake cleaner on hand and you wanna get it off right away. I'm gonna go throw this on the car right now, so I'll get it off once it's on the car. Uh, but just something to note, especially if you have nice new ones or maybe you bought a used set and you got them powder coated, you don't want it to strip off your nice finish. Um, the other thing we wanna do is just put your line over your, your drift container and you wanna just manually push in the pistons so that it's easy to put the new pads in and it gets any extra fluid out of the lines. So with that, let's grab some new bolts and mount it up. So your line's gonna go up through that factory bracket over there. This is going to slide on just like that. And I got some new bolts. So once you have everything snugged up, we're gonna to torque this down to 80 foot pound. Okay. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention earlier, the rotors are side specific. So these ones with the R are right and the ones with the L are left. If you get confused, um, the easiest way is if you stand behind the car, your right is on your right. 
and your left is on your left. Also think about like in the United States, you have a left-hand drive car, where in the UK, it's typically a right-hand drive car. So just think about it like that and you will be good to go. So with that, I need to grab one other part and we can secure our brake line. Now with these StopTech lines, it comes with this little part right there and that is what secures it into here. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to feed this through there. It's going to be a little bit difficult, so I'm gonna show you off here. And then you take this little clip and you snap it in and that's going to keep it in the proper location. And it has this like, plasticky nylon insert so that nothing is rubbing. Um, so you don't have metal on metal or anything like that. So I'm just gonna pop this through and slide this clip on. Now, a lot of times, I don't know why they make it so difficult. It is very difficult to get this back in. So if you have a pair of insanely huge channel locks, it normally helps. And next you take this little washer piece, slides on like that. And you're gonna feed this up. And remember, you wanna twist it from the top and we're gonna snug this up. And we are good to go with that brake line. So really, at this point in the process, this is done. So you can see it's not very difficult. Um, the other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is with the heat shield, there's no modification needed for the front. So it's pretty simple to do. Um, now we're just gonna throw the pads on and then we will move on to the rear. So next we're gonna take some brake lube here we're gonna put it on the back of the pad. This is gonna make sure that it's not squeaky. You just take it and it slides in just like that. Make sure that you never get this stuff on your rotor because that can be a terrible day. So then this just slides in. Isn't that so easy? It's so easy how this works. So then we got our, our new pins and our new clip. Remember the parts that go down, go down. I'm gonna slide the pin in from the back. Hook it through here. Slide it up like that. And do the same with the rear. I'm just gonna take this, push it down. just navigate through and then you're going to take your hammer and your punch and you're gonna hit it till it goes down like that and then you do the exact same thing on the other one and that's it that is how easy it is to change your pad so you can see you know track guys love these calipers because it's so easy I don't think it gets much easier than that now before we move on to the rear the last thing that I do want to say is that your front right side does not have one of these little wear sensors. BMW puts one on the driver front, well, left front, and then also on the right rear. So you only have one of these sensors that controls all the front and then one in the back. So we're not gonna show you this. Basically all you do is just clip it into your pad, but we're gonna show you the example of, we'll say the more difficult one, which is the rear one, just because it has a little bit more routing. Um, the one over on the other side is just super simple. We've actually already done the brake on the other side. So once we do this, we're gonna show you a little time lapse of that side, and then we're ready to bleed the brakes. All right, here we are in the rear of the vehicle. So same exact thing. We have to disconnect our brake line with our 11 mil over here. And they're not, they're not terribly tight. Just always be very careful, especially if you're not using a line wrench. Yeah, see, no fluid loss, that's good. Okay, so as we kind of prefaced up there, you do have one of these brake wear sensors, which is routed along this way. Okay, so just keep a mental note of how this is routed. You are going to need a 10 mil to remove this little plastic nut. And then you can just lift this up. And there's this little compartment in here it opens like that, and then you'll be able to see the connection. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just follow this along here. And it's the, the one with the writing right there. So pop this out. I'm just gonna use a pick tool. To release the clip, there we go. 
And then while you're here, you might as well just take your new one so you don't forget how it's routed. And again, we're gonna have all these parts down in the description for you to make your life easy. Then take this, clip it in, clip that in like that. Lock that back up. With these, you just lift up over here and then this will rock down. I'll take our new wire. Put it through. here and then just make sure that this rubber piece this little shielding piece lines up with this one and then you can see that it'll actually go under the little cap for the bleeder so that actually acts as a little holder so I'm gonna just leave this connected this sensor is trash because the brakes are shot on this car which is why we're doing it so really at this point it is time to remove the caliper remove the rotor, and then reassemble all that in the reverse order. So with these caliper bolts, you have one where my, my socket is right now, and then you have one up top here. These are a little bit smaller. These are 16s. We're gonna remove these. And they're actually torqued less than the front as well. They're just a little bit more awkward. And as you'd imagine, you need to replace these as well. Okay, so now that this is done, we'll take this off and it's time to pull the rotor. Okay, get that six mil, boom. Now, again, make sure your e-brake is not on. A lot of times these rear ones are a pain to get off. Um, sometimes they get like stuck, like they seize up a little bit, but sometimes they come off easy. So let me grab my rubber mallet and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna tap it around and then that's gonna make it a lot easier to get off. All right, I have a feeling like it's gonna be a little bit stuck. Okay, so this happens. This happened to me on the other side of her, like I said, I've already done the other side. Um, it, it gets a little bit funky and a little bit seized up. Um, so just be very careful. Again, just use your mallet, go around. You basically are breaking off some of the corrosion. Um, what happens is it'll kind of lock up. If you can spin it, it'll make it so it starts to break the corrosion, but otherwise it, it doesn't want to really come off. It gets a little spring loaded. So um, what I did on the other one was I spun the opposite side because this side will kind of lock up. So let me go on the other side. Join me. <clears throat> ah, spoiler alert. Look how cool it looks. It's so cool. Let's see if I can. Do what I did on the other side. Give me this piece of wood. There we go. All right. <laughs> Ready? All right, let's go to the other side before it falls off. Woo! See? That's the magic trick. It gets so stuck. And then when you spin it, it falls off. So, um, again, Highly recommend a stud conversion. I mean, these are going, look at this. This is ridiculous. Look how groovy it is. That's why his car didn't stop. Yeah, these are trash anyway. Um, but that's how you do it. That's my secret trick. And clean up your hub a little bit. Okay. We can take this and we can drop in stainless screw so it doesn't seize up over time and snap and get all funky. You typically don't need to really torque this one, just go snug. It's, I don't know the torque off the top of my head, it's probably like an eight Newton meter or so. So now as we did before, we're going to take off these old lines. 
we're gonna throw in our new stainless lines. And if you don't know, the benefit of a stainless line is it doesn't flex, where with a rubber line, what'll happen is it can flex a little bit. You know, just when you think about like blowing up a balloon. With the stainless line, it doesn't flex, so you get much better brake feel. All right, snug that up with a 14 mil, and then we're ready to install it with some new bolts. Okay, so line this up. Now you'll notice that we didn't have to trim the heat shield at all. I am though going to push it back a little bit. When we did mine, my heat shield uh, was a little bit too close to the rotor, but then we just pushed it back and everything's been fine since. So once you have it snugged up, these have a lesser torque because it has a smaller bolt. These will get torqued down to 37 foot pound with 90 degrees of extra rotation. So basically torque it down to that torque spec and then go in additional 90 degrees. Now because of that additional 90 degrees, you always wanna make sure that you're not reusing the same bolts or what can happen is you could go to tighten these down again and then once you do it, they're gonna snap. So with that, I'm gonna finish torquing it and then we're going to finish up here. Okay, so what, since that's torqued up, we can just take this, put that 10 mil plastic nut back on. All right, so you guessed it. I'm gonna grease up the back here. And on the rear pad, sorry, I know the other one's kind of in your way right now. Let me just put it down so you can see what's going on. You're gonna take this sensor and just clip it in. There we go. And what you want to do is you, you'll notice that this side is flat and this other side has that little bump out. What happens is once you get your pad down to where the bump out is, it breaks the end of the bump and then it triggers the car and tells it that um, that there's something wrong with the brake. So a lot of guys, when they start tracking their car, they'll actually pop this out and not use it because your car is not gonna freak out that way. Right now, Chris's car has the brake light on because he broke that. So then you're just gonna take your pad, make sure that everything is compressed. This just needs a little bit more compression. Slide that in. Okay, then the seat. Then you can take your wire. There's a little notch cut out in there. And I'm going to take my pin here, line that up, put it through here. And just slide it through like that. And then I could take my punch and my hammer, pop these in. Take the included washer, throw that on there, and feed it up. And again, you're threading it from the top down, and then snug up your brake line. And then just like on the front, if you want to counter hold it, it's a 14. Otherwise, it's going to move around a little bit on you. All right, so now that the brake line is tight, um, really the last thing we need to do is bleed the brake. So I'm going to lower the car a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to bleed. For the bleeding process, you're going to need some kind of bleed system. I like this one for Motive. We're gonna have everything linked for you down below. It's just an Amazon find. And then I have some Motul 6, RBF 660 brake fluid. I have three on hand. I already have one poured in here. I'm gonna pour the other two in next. And then you need one of these little brake fluid catchers in addition to that 11 mil line wrench that you used earlier. So let me get these poured in here and then I'll show you what to do. Now, one thing that's very important is with these Motive bleeders, they are specific to certain types of vehicles. So this is the European model. And what it does is it will actually thread right on to your brake fluid cap. So that way everything is tight and we're going to get no air in our system. All right, so to get to our brake fluid reservoir, you turn all of these 90 degrees, and then this will just pull up. 
and you can put it to the side. Next, take a rag and clean off all the junk around your brake fluid reservoir. Make sure this is as clean as possible. And you're going to carefully remove the cap and set this in a place where it's not going to fall into the unknown. And you're going to thread your cap on like so. Ready? Now the way that this works is it's going to apply pressure to the brake system. We're going to go to 25 PSI on here. I'll show you that in just a second. So basically the big thing is you wanna make sure that you have plenty of fluid in here. So even if you only need to put two bottles through, it's a good idea to just put a third bottle through just to make sure that you don't run dry at any point because then you're gonna use a lot more brake fluid bleeding it over and over. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna pressurize the system. We're gonna get that up to 25 PSI. And then I'm going to remove that piece of wood that we installed on the brake pedal. And then this will apply that outward pressure. And then we'll start the bleed process. Okay, so what you wanna make sure is that you have it around 25. And you wanna make sure that this number isn't just going down. Otherwise you're gonna have a leak and it's just not going to work as efficiently. Now, when you're bleeding your brakes, you wanna start with your farthest break from your reservoir and then work your way closer. So we're going to start with the right-hand side rear. So if you're in the United States, it is the passenger rear. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just loop this wire over here. And I'm going to put my line wrench on here. This is an 11 mil. And then you just slide this over your bleed valve. Then very carefully crack it open and you are going to start to see the fluid go through. And basically what you want to do, if you're changing out your fluid, you want to look for a different color fluid. Um, and then if you are just bleeding your brakes, which is essentially what we're doing, I mean, we're going to end up replacing all his fluid anyway. But when you're bleeding your brakes, the big thing is you want to make sure that you don't see a bunch of air bubbles. So. I don't see any air bubbles at all, which is a really good sign. It means we didn't jack up the system and pump a bunch of air into it. All right, now because I do wanna flush all of his old um, fluid out of the system, I'm just gonna let this sit here for a second. Now, one thing you can do to just prevent all of the dirty fluid from going through the line, if you take a little bit out of the actual reservoir with like a turkey baster, um, it'll make this process a little bit quicker, but it's, it's not that bad. Um, the big thing is while this is going, you wanna make sure that you have a constant 25 PSI. So um, every couple of minutes, just go up and check, make sure that you're not running low on fluid. And also you wanna make sure that that pressure is consistent. So as you can see, um, I have some dirty fluid in my little container here. However, this is looking mighty clean. So um, I'm gonna shut this off. So to do so, just take your line wrench, pop it back on there and then just snug it up. You don't wanna go crazy tight on this because one thing that can happen is you can mess up those threads and strip it out. Now, when you go to put this one back on, put your brake wear sensor and then put the cap over it. And then the next farthest is going to be the left-hand drive rear. So the, in the United States, the driver rear. So let's go bleed that brake now. Now, while this is bleeding, one thing that I meant to tell you earlier is you don't need to cut your rear dust shield, um, but you may need to just push it back a little bit. So just be careful and then just flex it back a little bit. Uh, when, I did, when I did mine um, yesterday, actually, uh, mine was a little bit too close to the rotor and it was rubbing a little bit. Um, so I just flexed it back just a hair and it was good to go. Okay, so this fluid is looking super nice. No bubbles. Then what we're going to do is we are going to go to the front right side, also known as front passenger. Now on the front, you'll notice that there are two locations that need to be bled. You really should do the outer one first because technically, you know, it's three inches farther away from the reservoir. So just let this go. 
Again, just keep an eye on your pressure. Make sure that you go until you stop seeing bubbles or you just see the fluid change colors. The, now the inner ones typically bleed a lot faster than the outer ones. There's not really a tremendous amount that you have to do on the inner ones. Let me pull this off. We'll go do the last one. We'll reset the computer system, put the wheels back on obviously. And then this job is done. Again, make sure if you spill a little bit that you go back with some brake cleaner as soon as you can and wipe that off. This one looks good. Now what I like to do while that's still hooked up, just reach into the car and push your brake pedal down a few times and then we'll make sure that the, the level is correct. Because you have to remember right now, all of the pistons are you know, sucked in. So as soon as you push on that pedal, it's going to push fluid through the system. All right, so it might be hard to see what our level is actually right to there. So we're right, we're a millimeter under the max. So um, we are good to go on that. So with that, I'm gonna throw the wheels back on. All right, before you start driving, press the brake five to 10 times or so. Make sure you pump up brakes. Otherwise, the first time you do it, you're not gonna stop. Right. All right, so to turn off the lights and the errors and whatnot and to reset, you can see it has a, a brake system error. You're gonna just press and hold on the button on your odometer. You're, you're gonna know if it's working or not if your mileage changes. So mine didn't, so I'm just gonna let go and then do it again. It's gonna zero out and then it'll come back. And then that's how you know it's gonna work. Okay, and then you can cycle through this little um, menu system right here. So the second one is rear brake pad. So we replace those. So I'm going to press and hold. I'm gonna lift and then press and hold again. And then you're going to see a little reset bar. Reset in progress. Okay, so now my rear brakes, it says are good for about 35,000 miles. I'm going to press it again for the brake fluid. I'm gonna press and hold because we did flush all that out. Let go and then press and hold one more time. Okay, and then I need to do the front brakes since we did those as well. Now this says we have 35,000 miles available to us because the pads were newer, but we're gonna reset it anyway. So there you go, now we have 60,000 miles. Okay. And then once we start the car, you can see we don't have that brake error anymore because we did replace the sensors and we told the car, hey, it's got brand new brakes on it. So um, once you've done that, the next part of the process is to bed the brakes in. Basically, you're going to do a series of decelerations. Um, I'm going to list down below in the description for what Stop Tech recommends. It's raining right now and it's not good to do it on a public road anyway. But basically, some will have you go from 60 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour, like do it 10 times in a row or so. And that transfers this layer of material from your pads to your rotors. So that way, it's going to make you stop amazing. So if you don't do it, your brakes aren't gonna last as long and they're not gonna work as well. If you do it, it's going to make your brakes work significantly better and it's going to help them last their long life. So anyway, that is the process on how to put F80 calipers and also some upgraded rotors on your F30. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I know I did this on my car and especially because my car has a, a pure stage two turbo. I think it has 450 to the wheels right now and 550 torque. Um, you know, you can go as fast as you want, but if you can't stop, you know, it's, it's a bad day. So it's always a really good idea to upgrade your brakes. And by doing this, it's probably the most budget friendly. It's probably the best bang for the buck, especially getting used calipers that you can do. I wouldn't recommend used pads and, um, and rotors, but with this setup, it's gonna be a complete winner. So once again, my name is Brian. That's Zach behind the camera. For all the parts, tools, everything from today's video, be sure to see the links in the description. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe. And check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.